All right, welcome back everybody to the sixth week of Tech Bytes, specifically the Python session. We are glad to see some people have returned after our two week break, in which last we were hosting our first online hackathon with our team at Hack the Lib. If you attended that, we are glad that you did and hopefully you had a great time. But now it's time to get back to some Tech Bytes and learn and make some more cool things. All right, for to the agenda today, uh, we're going to review the past terms that we've been going through. We're gonna go through a few definitions. Uh, and using that knowledge, we're going to create a random number generator game, uh, sorry, random number guessing game with lists and loops. So over the past five weeks, we've learned a lot. Now, here are some of the terms we've learned and each day over the past five weeks, Andrew and I have gone deeply into what these terms mean. We have made analogies to relate them to real life examples. And we've even put most of these into practical use. And to recap, Andrew and I will switch off and uh, do a quick recap, you know, just to get those uh, webs out of our heads if you forgot a couple of things over the past two weeks. Uh, starting off with variables. This was one of the first key concepts which we learned. Remember, variables are there to hold data. They hold values. Andrew gave a great example a couple weeks ago about how we can uh, use variables to do mathematical operations, to hold words, aka strings, or to hold numbers. And we applied that by doing our own calculations and holding values, such as the higher or lower game we made. We held the value of the computer generated value in a variable. So that's a quick recap on variables. Now Andrew, you do functions? Yes, but uh, we have a question real quick from Redima uh, about how many Python classes are left. That's a great question, Redima. Uh, we were, we probably, we'll talk about right now actually, you know. Uh, so we have three including today. And uh, we'll get some more finalized details out coming soon on our Google Classroom. We'll keep you guys updated. But for the Python one, we have today, next week, and the last week of July. We'll wrap it up on July. However, the JavaScript one will continue till the end of next month, that being August. We're going to be deep diving into some more uh, web development and having some more fun with that. And uh, we'll, we're going to be focusing more of our time on the JavaScript session. And uh, yeah, so Python is unfortunately coming to a close, but hopefully that's some fun. Right, so uh, talking about functions now. So functions, uh, we've always made the analogy that it is akin to say a routine that you have. Uh, we've made a very uh, specific example you might relate to about your parents uh, having you say clean your room. And that's something that you do repeatedly. Uh, you might do that uh, every week or every month. The most important part is that it is a segment of your life that you do multiple times. And this is to a degree what functions are like. It is a segment of code, a segment of work that the computer does, but it does it several times, often with slight variations depending on uh, what uh, information you give the computer. Like the, we'll talk about parameters in a bit, but uh, yeah, I think we should go to loops with uh, Ray on it real quick. So loops, and uh, Andrew will talk about if else statements, but we try to remember that loops are a way for us to run a piece of code multiple times until a certain condition is met. Now, I believe it was three weeks ago, not the last time we met, we talked about how we can use two different types of loops. Now, what are those two different types of loops? Well, remember, in our higher lower game, we used a while loop, and then we were checking that the code inside of the while loop would run always whenever the computer's generated value did not meet the input value by us, the user. And the second type of loop which we discussed was a for loop through which we could specify a certain number of times, say five or 10 times for the code inside of the for loop to execute. Now, Andrew and I uh, you know, make this analogy that the for loop is sort of like a set of actions. You have to keep on completing in order before you can do something. So say like your mom is asking you to do some chores before you can hop on and play some video games. Well, 
that condition is similar to a for loop in which that you have to keep on repeating those actions until the end, in this case, until the condition is met. Now Andrew will talk about some if else statements. All right, so we've talked about if else statements uh, usually in the context of control and logic, and that is what if then statements usually are. If you wanna perform tasks, like we've said uh, with, for instance, uh, chores, if we're continuing with the chore analogy, you might only do chores if your room is dirty or if the dishwasher is pretty much full. You would need that sort of logic to detect uh, whether you should do something in the first place. And that's what if then statements are for. They're for executing and performing tasks only when certain conditions are met. Much like the for loop, but uh, in this case, there's no repeated thing. It is just a singular instance of that action. Yep, and lastly, we got a list, which we learned two weeks ago. Now, if you wanna, if you have any wet, like any uh, misconceptions or anything, any questions about a uh, list, and we went very in deep into indexes on list, uh, what we can do with list, different uh, putting values into list, all uh, two weeks ago. So if you want to check out that video on YouTube, we have that up. But a quick overview, lists are a way for us to hold a group of values which are of the same type in one area. So say we want to, like today we will, we're going to put a bunch of numbers into a list or an array. And remember, one of the key distinctions which we made was that you can, you shouldn't at least in Python, put two different types into the same list. So what does that mean? For example, you shouldn't put the number 20 and your name into the same list in that sense. And we'll um, you do some more examples today with list in our uh, new game we're gonna be making. But um, other than that, let's get into it. So if everybody can open up the website that we code on, I'll leave the link on for a couple more seconds. Hit the Python 3 option. And can everybody confirm that they are good so we can get started? Uh, Vishnu is asking for the link. Let me drop it in the chat. All right, is everybody good? Yes, everybody on the website. Great. All right. So let's get started. So today we're going to be making a different type of game in which it's Although I wouldn't say it's the most fun game which we made, if you want to do some of the more fun games, it's like the higher lower game, the quiz game which we made. But today, uh, we want to make a, like sort of a game project which sort of encapsulates, brings together all the concepts which we've learned 
into one project. And what we're going to be doing essentially is making a random number guessing game. Now, what does that entail? Well, basically what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a list filled with a bunch of numbers. Then we're going to ask us, the user, to input a number. And then we're going to loop over the list in order to compare if the inputted value of the user matches any value inside of the list. And uh, this way we'll be using variables, functions, uh, if else statements, for loops, and lists. So Andrew, I'll get started and then I'll give you the remote control uh, whenever you want. Go. All right. All right, so first thing is first, we have to create a variable to get, or how about we first actually initialize our list and then we'll ask the user to input some values. So if everybody wants to head on over to the list tab, drag and drop the first list. Or you know what could make this actually cooler is that if we and do you think we should um generate ten random values in like a for loop and then add it to the list? We do. Are we doing like with words or numbers? Uh, just numbers. All right. Uh, I think yeah. Well, let's go the extra mile. Uh, generate okay. those random okay. numbers. So let's uh have a bit, have a bit more fun because it's ID allows to. So instead of us putting values like. Uh, like uh, me, like myself putting one, two, three, four, five into the list, we're going to generate some random values and then add them to the list. And how are we going to do this without having to type out that same line of code 10 times using a for loop. So if everybody can have hop on over to the loops tab, let's get a for loop out. We'll generate, how about, um, let's do 10, 10 different values in our list. Hit enter. And then we will head on over to create a variable. We'll call it a uh, random number generated or whatever you want to call it. Drag that in there. Now, in order to generate a random number, remember we need our library of math and a random. So how about we import those from the import tab? Next, we gotta actually generate the random number instead of just having it set equal to zero every time. So how about we head on over to random. We'll do, drag that random block inside there. And then we'll generate a random number between zero and um, let's do 10. So we'll make this 11 because remember the last number is exclusive. Now, uh, before I go a bit deeper, let's just see how this actually works and print out our variable, random number generated. So if I do print, random number generated, this is just so that we can see that there's actually 10 different values being generated. And as we run it, voila, we're able to see that there are 10 different uh, numbers being generated, some of which are the same. We might wanna say that it's actually inclusive instead of like exclusive. Oh, yeah. yeah, so it makes 10. So false alarm there, it is actually uh, inclusive. Yep. So that means that we will get the 100 value uh, as a possible value. Yep. So now we're able to see that we get 10 different values being printed out. Now, that's cool. We're able to get 10 different values, but remember, we got to hold them in an area. Now, where do we hold this, this data? Well, in a list. So let's hop on over to a list. We'll drag this command right here. Well, how about we re rename this variable? We'll call it um, computer numbers. And then now we got to discuss some commands of list. Andrew, you want to talk about what dot append, dot insert, extend all these up to? Certainly. So whenever you're using your list, uh, you have se several commands that you essentially have. Uh, there is insert, 
and then there is remove. Those are probably the two most common uh, options you have when you have a list. I think people, if you ever have like a grocery list, uh, you'll understand removing as one of those things where you just like strike out one of the uh, grocery items you might have on your next shopping trip. Uh, insert is similar, but in that it's the opposite of remove. However, you got to remember that lists in computer programming are sequential, meaning that there is an order of items. In fact, we can probably see this right now. Uh, Rayon, can you switch to the insert so that we can uh, see what happens? Hold on. Is, this, is there supposed to be like a index, insert index? Not yeah. Uh, not for this one. Okay, so uh, it's not showing up right now. Yeah. But just know that whenever you're inserting an item into a list, you are usually inserting it into a specific uh, slot. So for instance, uh, if I, do you have like access to um, some type of like paint program or? Yeah, let me pull up, give me one second. Yep. Let me pull up an ID real quick or uh, an online. All right. Just give us a second real quick and we will be back to the code faster than what you, than you can, uh, faster than you know. Oh wait, I said like, like some type of drawing program. Well, you went drawing program. Oh, okay. I thought you want to actually cut it out. Okay. No, they don't know how I, we haven't taught Python coding yet. Uh, I believe you can do that from your end, Andrew. If you hit share screen, whiteboard. Okay, yeah, I should probably just do that right now. Um, there you go. Uh, yep, you're right. Yep. Right. So, uh, so we have it right here. Um, you have a list of items from a grocer. You have like an apple. Uh, you have like a pear. I think that's how you spell pear. Uh, yeah, very fine. Whatever. Uh, you have orange. And there is a list uh, that has an order to it. So in a list, you'll have like, this is the first uh, item in the list. We'll just call it zero. And then you have the pair uh, that's like the item number one and then orange being item number two. When we say uh, that you have to insert with uh, index in mind or the order in mind, uh, if you want to say insert uh, some random shopping items, say, uh, just like the uh, random one off the top of my head, uh, something like we'll call it snacks. Well, you we need to know the order uh, that you need to insert it into. So if I wanted to order it into index uh, two, I have to make room. So after I insert it, the list will look something like this: apples, the first item; pears, the second item. Snacks is item two, and orange gets shifted to the right. If I wanted to remove snacks from this list, uh, I would also need to know the uh, index or the order. So if I want to remove snacks, I would need to remove it, uh, remove index number two. So it would actually just revert back to something like this because orange gets shifted back into its original place. Now, a lot of that. That, that is actually a lot to like keep in mind, the index. So what programmers usually do, and I, let me stop screen sharing and go back to Rayan's screen. Yep. What we do instead is we just simply have this uh, command in programming called append, which just means add it to the end of the list. That way, we don't need to worry about the order. We can just insert the item into the list at the very end of it. And uh, no information needs to be known about the order. Yep. So uh, yeah, Great. that is what we'll be using right now. Yep. 
And key difference, guys, is dot a pen. Think of it, it adds whatever number you have to the way end of the list. However, if you use dot insert, you gotta specify two parameters. I'm not sure if this works, but um, you gotta specify where you want the number to go and then what the number is. So that's the key difference. Uh, today we're not gonna be using dot insert, we're gonna be using dot append. So let's get on forward with that. So let's head on over to our variables, drag and drop our random number generated variable into the dot append command. And what this line of code is doing is that it is appending or adding the random number generated by the computer into our list. Now, once that has been generated, just for some visualization purposes, how about we print out our list? So head on over to statements, print. We'll head on over to list. Oh, okay. How about we just print the index? How, okay, how about we do this then? We'll head on over to list, drag and drop that, the circular list command into our print statement. And then we'll print out the letter I. Now you're like, what does the letter I represent? Well, it represents the different indexes in our list. The different values at certain indexes. And if you hit run, Oh, yeah. I think we need to actually declare it. Um, yeah. Here we go. So head on over to. So if you want to drag the list command up here, select whatever you called your list, like that, and then uh, just clear whatever values are inside. This way, we're actually declaring initializing our list variable so that we can reference it later on. We're basically telling the computer it exists. Now if we run it, we see there's no errors, and that 10 value, uh, 10 values have been generated inside of our list. Probably print yep. it, yeah. All right, let's do this. Oh. Oh. All right. And there we that, go. That is the list. Yep, so now we're able to see that these are 10 different values being printed out, and all these 10 values have been inserted into our list. Now, step one of the game, I'm just gonna delete this line, that's for some nice looking purposes on the console, but um, we got our first part of the game done. We've generated the 10 random values, and now comes the part where we gotta first get the user input, and then we gotta loop over the list, comparing the user input to each value at the third index on the list. So how about we, we hop on over to our variables, create a new variable, we'll call it user input, drag and drop that thing down there. But now we gotta get an input, remember, like we did for the higher or lower game, we gotta go to statements, input, drag that in there, ask any question you want, such as what is your number guess, I'll put in here, we also need to uh, change the uh, type. Indeed. We'll head on over to statements, I believe. Head on over to int, drag dot input into the int, like that. And like we've done previously, guys, the reason why we're doing this, once again, is because we wanna make sure that we're not comparing apples to oranges, in the sense that we're not comparing words to numbers and making sure that whatever input you put is an actual number. So if you want to actually run this, um, I'll print out our variable. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to show you guys for some visual purposes. See if this works. We put asking a number, we put five, it prints out five. All right, so now comes the last part in our game, that being the actual looping over the list and comparing the two values. So how about we, Andrew, do you want to do this part? Certainly. Uh, let us do that now. All right, you should control. All right. So now what we're going to do is we are going to loop uh, several times over the values and each time inputting a guess. So uh, in order to do that, we're going to need another loop. 
uh, this time, we're actually going to use the for each loop. Uh, I believe we already talked about this. It loops over the values in a list rather than uh, a range of values you'd see in the first option. So uh, first, let us actually use this. We are like making a guess for every uh, every um, number, right? Um, I thought we just do a one number and then we'll print out um if that number exists in the list. Okay, okay, uh, apologies for that. Um, let me just like fix that real quick. It is simple as putting it over there. Can make our guess. So let's actually make our, uh, uh, name our variables. So we, if we want to call uh, computer numbers, uh, I, yes, a single uh, number would be just computer number. You can name it uh, pretty much anything you can think sensible. Uh, I'm just going to write down the uh, singular form. And just as a quick, quick recap, uh, computer number is a single item in computer numbers. Uh, so if right now we actually uh, were to take a look at what that looks like, let me get out the um, statement so I can actually print it. So if we do this right now, computer number, it will show us the, it will go in order in the list and uh, check and see all of the separate numbers. Let me just get through this uh, part. So you see that uh, right there, it went through each item in the list and it got uh, in the form of computer number. Now uh, we need to actually check whether it is in, whether it matches our user input. So in order to do that, we need a bit of logic or an if statement in this case. So let's actually get it right now here. Uh, let me just remove this print real quick. So a uh, simple comparison, uh, we go into the, what we've known so far, uh, the logic, and we use one of these uh, comparison operators and we use equal equal. Now our value is computer number, uh, sorry, uh, user input. That is uh, the original input that we have and we are comparing it to the variable we have in our list. So if user input is equal to computer number, I believe we are, t are we tallying uh, the numbers or? Uh, sure, yeah, go ahead. Or we can just print out uh, you, this number was right or make sense of it. Yeah, I think that's probably a um, bit, we'll, it's more easier to keep track of that if we just do that. So you'll see that if we actually print user input, uh, right now I'm typing user input, you can just uh, use the block over here. Uh, it's a matter of preference really. So we should probably write down another thing like, you got, uh, you guessed, hold on, a correct answer, or I guess a correct computer number. And if we do that right now, uh, just to make this easier on us, I'm not gonna actually do it from zero to 100. I think it would probably be easier if it was zero to 10 or hmm, zero to 30, gives us better chance of guessing the correct number so we aren't left guessing for a while. Uh, so if you did that all right, uh, we will see that if well, I'm just going to guess 20 right now. So yes, it guesses a uh, correct computer number 20. And if we were to use a more concise range, say zero to five, it will actually print it out multiple times because we actually have multiple copies of that number in the list. So if we run it right now, uh, just one. Oh, doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. That's very rare. Uh, sometimes when you deal with random numbers, that's just going to happen. Oi. Finger slip there. Uh, no big deal. Just run it again. And you'll see that sure enough, there are multiple instances of one in the computer number list. All right, I think I should pass control back to you, Rion. Yep. 
Great. So there we go, guys. We'll be sure uh, if you had any trouble or anything, we'll be sure to print, uh, print, I mean, we'll be sure to post our uh, whole solution, the whole project finished on a Google Classroom as always. And uh, that is a wrap for this specific project. And just to highlight, we went over for loops. We went over two different types of for loops actually and used lists, random numbers, and variables in order to make a game in which we actually were able to guess a number inside of a list. And yeah, so hopefully you can see how loops and arrays, aka list, are able to combine and intertwine really nicely. And it's something which you will see comes very advantageously as you complete a program even more. So that is that. Let me pull up our next one. I believe uh, next time um, we will be starting out a uh, more typing based one. Uh, you'll see the, yeah, right here for a goal for next week, uh, we will start transitioning to typing code. Uh, this will be one of the focuses for the last three weeks of this course. We will be starting out uh, getting you used to actually writing down the code instead of dragging uh, blocks. So uh, hopefully you'll get a lot out of that soon. Yep. And uh, we're not going to do too much, go too in deep like we're going into the JavaScript session, but um, we're going to make sure to go over some of the fundamentals we've learned, like the for loops and variables, functions, and uh, typing code. So be excited for that next week, making a big jump. And other than that, I think that is a wrap for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. As always, stay tuned in our Google Classroom for any updates and uh, tell, more, tell more of your friends to join. And hopefully you had a good time. Take care. See you guys. Bye. Hi.